Thanks for being with me. I'm Robin Haynes. I have a studio full of diverse guests who all brought along some great information for you today. First, would you know what to do if someone standing right next to you were suffering from a stroke? Would you be able to recognize the signs? It's not as obvious as you may think, but knowing what you're seeing and how to react could help save a life. You can also help change a young life by making the choice to become a caseworker. May not be something you ever considered, but after seeing the impact you can have, we're sure you'll be inspired to do just that. And later, turning a dingy old basement into the room of your dreams. That is all ahead on Daytime. But first this afternoon, it's been about 90 seconds since I said hello to you. And in that time, two people here in the United States had a stroke. Every four minutes, a stroke will take someone's life. In fact, it's the number four cause of death in our country. So clearly, something must be done to reverse this trend. Well, that's why the American Heart Association has declared today World Stroke Day. And we are lucky enough to have Dr. B.J. Hicks, a neurologist with Ohio Health, and a board member with the Heart Association with us. Hello, Dr. Hicks. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and apparently this is a problem that many people may not know. These statistics are kind of hard to wrap your head around. So is that why you dedicated today to that? No question. You know, this is such a prevalent condition. It's a prevalent disease, and it's not only in this country, but worldwide. And what I'm shocked to see is the lack of recognition of the signs and symptoms of stroke and the fact that it's uh, preventable, it's treatable, and it's beatable. Okay, now how does the U.S. compare to the rest of the world? Well, here I think you mentioned it. It's the uh, fourth leading cause of death and the number one cause of preventable disability and adult disability in this country. In the world, uh, it is so profound uh, stroke death that compared to AIDS, malaria, and TB, classic uh, things that have been known worldwide to cause significant death, uh, stroke is higher than all of those combined. And I think that's surprising for folks because we do hear about it, but I don't think we put it in that category of one of the things that we can help really prevent. Um, so men versus women, is there a bigger chance in one or the other? There's almost 7 million stroke survivors in this country. And the majority, there's more women, I'd say about 3.8 million compared to 3 million are women. And the fact that stroke hits older patients and, and older people, uh, and women live longer, then women are going to both be affected by stroke and unfortunately die by stroke. Compared to breast cancer, it's, it's, there is, really is no comparison. The, the rate of stroke and uh, stroke uh, death, unfortunately, is so much higher than even breast cancer. No one really knows that. Right. And, and you talked a lot about preventability. This is one of those things we can prevent. So how do we stop a stroke from happening? If someone were to ask me one thing, I would say blood pressure. If everyone got their blood pressure in the 120 over 80 range that we all know about, that would prevent stroke by 50%. Wow. Uh, smoking is also a very big uh, risk factor that is a very preventable uh, part of, of uh, stroke. Uh, cholesterol, diabetes, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, and atrial fibrillation or an abnormal heart rhythm. These are all big, big stroke risk factors. Okay, so we have all these risk, risk factors. We know we can prevent a lot of them. What are some of the things we can do? I mean, is exercise a big thing? Watching our diets? What kind of advice? It's very easy to think of the meat and potatoes of just good, healthy living. And it seems very boring and it, you know, it's not very profitable for doctors. There's <laughs> sure. no pharmacological, uh, you know, uh, advantage, but diet and exercise are very, very important. Okay. And we talk warning signs. Go through these with us. What should people look for? You're sitting next to somebody. How do you know they're having a stroke? So there's an acronym out there. Uh, hopefully we're trying to get the word out nationwide and that's FAST. Uh, F is for face. If your face droops or um, it feels suddenly numb on the lower half of your face, uh, that's what the F is for. A is the arm. If the arm drifts or if the entire arm goes numb, same thing goes for the leg. If S is for speech, that's if your speech suddenly becomes slurred or it's not making any sense or you can't quite get the words out. And T stands for time, and that's very, very important. If someone has any of these symptoms, you stop, you dial 911, you don't call my office, you don't call your friend, you don't call your boss, you call 911 and you get to the emergency room immediately because this, again, is a treatable condition. Right, you react fast and you can actually minimize what happens as a result, right? 
absolutely. It's a treatable. It's a um, it's a condition where patients could come in with significant, almost life-threatening deficits, and they can walk out of the hospital if we get to the patient quick enough. Okay, and you've got an app for that, a fast app, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You go on strokeassociation.org and you can find this app. It uh, tells you different stroke facts, the stroke signs and symptoms we went over, some of the less common stroke signs and symptoms, as well as where is your closest stroke center, which is very important for treatment. Okay, and we're going to quickly touch these bracelets. You have been passing out solidarity bracelets, these are? Yes, and it's, again, more to spread awareness. You know, when it comes to other conditions, it may not be as, uh, you know, may not have the numbers that stroke has as far as death and disability. Uh, other conditions have been very good as far as getting awareness out there, and stroke has to do that as well, and this is one way to do that. Okay, and you have also helped do that today, so thank you so much for sharing that with us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, do you have what it takes to change a child's life? It may seem like a daunting task, yet a simple career choice could make a lasting difference for children and generations to come. That's next. As a